Bear with me, I'm still getting used to my new Bible app since I left the one that got rid of the Passion Translation. Um, jab, jab. Um, oh, my Lanta. No, I'm just kidding. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I totally forgot. Man, somebody is a year old today. That, there ain't, man, there is no doubt that is a hard baby. You look at that kid. That, that, I mean, that is a hard baby. Anyway, uh, they asked about dedicating him. And um, um, <clears throat> there is, uh, Raquel had to run off a while ago. I think someone was trying to hijack our stuff. And uh, so I think she got stuff mixed up. Or not, sorry, I'm not blaming you. Anyway, never mind. Side. <laughs> yeah. So, and I already sent all the kids out. Are they upstairs? Go get them all back in there. And um, if y'all too can go ahead and bring him up here. Uh, we're going to get here in front. And so if y'all want to do pictures, we got it. You know, all that room and space, you can jump up here wherever. Um, <clears throat> and so, <laughs> how about right here in the middle so I can catch everything? Um, so bear with me a second. Oh, oh where are we? Yeah, so y'all, y'all bear with me. I'm still trying to get used to this thing here. Um, do, 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 do. Uh-oh, look at that. It jumped all the way around. Good Lord. So um, I can't believe it's been a year. I can't believe it's been a year, man. Yeah. Yeah. Mom, can you believe that he said that? <laughs> That's what it looked like. Um, there's, a, there's a scripture um, that uh, we need to go over, and I just, I'm not used to this app. I have it all marked in my other one. Ugh. So does everybody know the story of, of Hannah? Yeah. So there was a point there um, where, you know, she, she couldn't have a son, right? And she ends up getting a son, and there is this passage, um, oh my goodness, man, okay, so I'm going to go by memory, can you come up here, babe, dude, I love it, man, (laughs) yeah, totally cool, not quite to Chuck Chuck Liddell look, but it's close, Um, so um, I am completely drawn a blank on his name, Caleb, oh my goodness, I'm sorry, man. I, I, you don't get it right either. <laughs> so there's this, this passage in um, 1 Samuel that, you know, Hannah prays and asks for a child, and she gets it. She goes, sees the prophet, you know, and all the story. It's, a, it's an amazing story. But the thing that she says in there about her son is she says, I will lend him to the Lord. And then it says that he is lent to the Lord. That, it, that that's, man, this kid belongs to you. And so that's the whole intent and purpose behind dedicating. It's, that's where it comes from. And so it's always beautiful when a family says, man, we, we want to dedicate our child, you know, make it known, make a declaration. So you know the difference between a declaration and a decree A declaration is when you say, you state that this is a fact. Does that make sense? So what we're about to do is state the fact to the entire world that this kid belongs to the Father. And that his steps, his ways, his heart, his eyesight, his, you know, everything about him is directed to the Lord. 
And it's so cool, man. It's beautiful. Um, I always like to ask if, because I don't have, I'm, I'm just driving the boat here, you know. I always like to ask if you guys want to pray. Sure. Yeah. You're the dad, man. I mean, <laughs> you actually made this thing, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you didn't make it. Like you didn't make it. No, yeah. Nine months. That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the men say. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, feel them elbows. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, we just we really. I, I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, not on video. No, no. The one thing that's so awesome is that the Hars, uh, one of their main callings on their heart, one of their, their purposes is for family. And, you know, it's exciting to see, like, last, last week, um, uh, you know, he was trying to take us to a new capacity of worship, <laughs> right? You know, he was, he, was, he was trying. And so they're trying to make breakthroughs in worship and intimacy and and, and this is just another level of family breakthrough, amen? Um, so we, we want to agree with you guys and just pray over him. Uh, it just, man, that God's purposes and intents would, would come through. And so, man, I'll give it to you guys. You can take turns. You, I mean, you got him? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. God, we just, uh, we just thank you today. We just thank you for the Caleb. Yes. We just thank you for the Son of God. We just thank you that just all the things he's already given us in this life and all the things that he's going to do for the kingdom, God. Yeah. Yes. We just ask that he's just going to be uh, a king in the kingdom, God, and he's yeah. going to do amazing things, Lord, for you. Yes. And, God, we just, um, we just ask that this church just surround him yeah. and just give him resources and whatever kind of support that he needs going through this life. Yeah. We just ask that there's going to be a lot of things going on, but we know that he's going to be able to make it through because of the support of this church. Yes. And we just, again, just bless you, Thank you Caleb. And we just ask that, uh, man, we just, we just love you so much, Caleb. Yeah. And we just thank you for all you've done for our life already. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> No, I just, um, Jesus, I thank you for this little bundle of energy. <laughs> and and Caleb, we speak peace over you. And we speak, um, we ask for, for the eyes to see your identity and call it out of you. And we thank you for just filling our family. Amen. Amen. You know, one of the things that when we, um, so many of us are leaving this church-minded culture and stepping into kingdom, and one of the things that Chris and I wish we would have known back then, what we realize now, is that when you have your kids, you know, they're all different, more, some of them are emotional, some of them can take it, some of them can, you know, I'll just side note, have you ever been to the heart house? I mean, these kids are falling all the time. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting at their table, and Chris and I are like, oh, are you okay? And they just keep talking. Like, they just keep going. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> true. That's true. Like, they're hitting their heads, and Ryan doesn't miss a beat. He just keeps on with his conversation. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> they're good parents. They're good parents. <laughs> um, but, you know, one of the things that we know now that we wish we had known back then is recognizing in your kids the emotionalness, the strength all the beauty that comes with them and calling it out of them so that they too can learn to recognize that in themselves and that's the beginning of identity. That they don't have to be 25, 30 years old trying to figure it out. That their parents are bringing this out of them at such a young age. And that's what I love about dedication is because that's something that a parent steps into. And it's not always perfect, but the reality is is that there is no perfect way. <laughs> You're winging it. You know, when I'm saying that these kids are falling and stuff, they're not bad parents. They know their kids. They know, they know what's happening. 
and they're learning and they're growing and they're going to learn even more with them and through them. So I just wanted to mention that, that this is an awesome group of people right here that we as a body have been blessed with. So we thank you guys. Love you. Yeah. So Caleb, we just, man, we just thank God for you. But man, we speak to just that name alone. You're a warrior. You're one of only two people. You're named after one of two people that only had the vision to see the future of what God wanted to do. So we speak new insight as you continue to grow. We declare that, that insight to see what God is doing in the future, that you would live up to the namesake of that man so many years ago that went into the promised land, was not afraid. He was a warrior, had a warrior's heart. He was brave. He was strong. He was capable. And he was willing to go for people. So you're going to have a people's heart. You're going to be after the kingdom mindset of helping people, being a warrior, a protector, uh, and a provider even at that. And so we just speak that over you. You're, you're beautiful and amazing and already trying to whoop your brother, man. It's so cool. So, man, God, we thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, just anoint them even more in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys, man. Yeah. All right, and <laughs> sounds just like his dad. So, man, y'all, I'm sorry that that we missed that. It, I have an, an, a note that I like to go off of in my other Bible, and uh, you know, Raquel did decide to get sick um, at the beginning of the week, and then passed it off to me, and. I was trying to take care of you, and you got me sick. Uh, Sarah, be quiet. No. <laughs> um, no, seriously. Um, I, you know, that's more important than any notes I have written on my paperwork here. What, what this message, if you want to call it, that, that's, this is what's important is family. Jesus, um, I'm just so blown away with how we've done, how, 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 uh, let me back up, uh, get my words right, how we did things for 25 years, and is, I know that sometimes I can sound like I, I hate religion, and I do, it's a, it, religion is actually a spirit that is not of God, and I hate that stuff, man, I, I hate it, I hate what it took from us. I hate what we didn't get to experience, um, and, and, and on and on and on. But, man, um, that's why we look at the Bible. We look at what happened in, the, in, in, in Jesus' own walking and stepping around, but also in just even the first century church. I mean, I know I always joke about Acts chapter 10, about Cornelius, but go look at what happened in his house. They had a full-on radical encounter in his house with his whole family. And Peter just sits down, just sits down and they just have conversation. He goes, oh, man, I, I don't know what to tell you. What do you, you. Let me just talk about the Bible. And that's what the gathering of the church looked like back then. And not only that, we, we've gone through the teaching of the word Ecclesia and what it really means and how you, know, you and I are meant to... Um, we're meant to influence the city. It's a, it's, a, it's a political term, actually. But anyway, that's not where I was going. I was just trying to state that um, um, it's okay to take the time and, and the direction to do this. And it doesn't have to be a three-minute thing. It, no, we want to speak into his life. Now, you all as family have a responsibility as well to continue to speak into Caleb's life. To continue to speak in to the har as to the hars as parents, and you saw him, man. He's wild. We got one of those too, man. That's his actual name, Wilder. So we understand about praying for parents. Does this make sense? So it's okay that he's you know one of them's running around up and <laughs> it's okay. Jesus didn't go. Oh my God. These stinking kids. <laughs> Holy Spirit didn't go, oh, I can't work in that.
Uh, Pastor, let me know when y'all get it all together and I'll come back. That's just stupid stuff, but that's the way... That's what the spirit of religion has done to the world today. And I want to cover something that, man, I saw this and it blew me away. So bear with me because I'm having some moments, man. Um, I'm just stuck in this aspect of kingdom and, and how you and I are meant to change the world and what that looks like and how we do that and on and on and on. And so turn with me in the book of Mark. Um, you know, here at CORE, we, we just pound so much about identity and purpose and you finding out who you are, how God made you, to, what He created you to do, on and on and on. And, and that's, a, that's an ongoing journey. Anybody that just, that just thinks that, oh yeah, they got it all figured out on their self, what they are, oh yes, this is how I am, oh yes, this is what I will do, um, there, then that leaves no room for growth. You know? Uh, because you're, you're, you're completed, you're a complete new creation, but the process of, a, of achieving all that capacity is the process of life, <laughs> life with Christ, amen? And so here, um, in the book of Mark chapter 1, is everybody there? Okay, man, I am a creature of pattern, and this new app is, man, it's rocking my world, man. Um, so, uh, and I have my notes. So, last week we were talking about all things to all people and about differences, right? And how you and I were meant to, um, that, that's what Paul stated is, hey, be all things to all people. When I'm with the Jews, I, I can walk with the Jews. When I'm over here not the, with the people that are not Jewish, then I, I can run that way too, and and so there was this aspect, and you can go back and read it, 1 Corinthians um, 9. Uh, at the, uh, the aspect of, of becoming what is needed for the situation that your life is in at the moment. Does that make sense? It's at the moment. Because one moment you're in a great place, and one minute you can be in a bad one. <laughs> and one moment you can, you know, be dealing with, Great people, and the next minute you can be dealing with some fools. How are you going to handle that, right? Um, so in being all things to all people, I, was, I had that in my head as I was reading this week. And I, for some reason, I jumped back over to Mark. Mark is one of my favorite. Uh, it's my favorite gospel just because, of, uh, I don't know, it's just, I love it. Um, and I don't know why I went there, and now I do. <laughs> uh, Dad had some things to show me. And so as I was hanging on to 1 Corinthians about uh, being all things to all men, I come over here to Mark 1, and I start reading. I'm like, whoa, because Jesus was the perfect example of all things to all people, right? Um, he went where no one else went. He did things that no one else did. He, oh, no, 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 man, we're Jewish. We don't talk to no Samaritans. We certainly don't, man, that's a, that's a prostitute, man. You're talking to her. Number one, you're a man. Like, he didn't care. Whoa, that's a tax collector. No, 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 Jesus, you don't do that. Jesus kicked that door right in, right? They freaked out because he healed somebody on the Sabbath day. Like, um, can you imagine uh, being so blinded that, that you can't see something like that? I, I think most of us can because I believe most of the people in here, we come from that. We were dealing... Uh, with a situation um, here recently uh, with, with uh, some parents who they, they simply are, are they, they cannot see um, they can't see 
their, their lack of understanding that their child simply needed a parent. You know, um, if, if a, if a, I tell you what, let me do this. Let me make some more uh, heresy hunters real mad. Let me mention Chris Valentin. <gasps> Chris Valentin told a story that a friend of theirs, of uh, his and Kathy's, um, she was talking to them, and she, um, she was in ministry just like all of us. She's just a, a friend of theirs at church for years, and she was in an extremely horrible situation. Things were going extremely bad. And she was talking to them, and as she began to talk, she lost it, completely lost it. Started dropping every kind of cuss word you could imagine and all that. And Chris said that in the middle of that, not one time did he say, oh my, hey, don't cuss, you're in the house of the Lord. Not did, he never said, uh, hey, I understand, but you shouldn't cuss. I'm not saying cussing is okay. Don't go out of here. And... <laughs> but see, he said that in the moment they knew her heart, they know her, they know her heart, that she was in a bad place at the moment trying to deal with some bad issues, and that's just something that happened. That doesn't determine who she is. And so it's okay. And they didn't even address it. They just moved on loving her. And we were dealing with some folks in a, in a similar situation where they're so stuck in their religion that they can't, they can't hear their own child crying out in a, in, a, in, 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 in a desperate, desperate need for a mom and a dad to be a mom and a dad. They can't hear it because they're so blinded by the stupidity that that religious spirit brings. Does this make sense? It, it, your child, your family, they mean more than if someone cusses or not. They mean more than that. And I don't think you should cuss. Sorry. That's okay. can get mad at me. It's in, I don't know. It's whatever. <laughs> But here in Mark 1, we see Jesus being all things to all people. Um, man, okay. I love this. So uh, everybody knows about um, John the Baptist, right? Does anybody remember what, what he was out there saying and preaching? Repent. <laughs> Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand, right? That's what he was saying. I'm going to come back to that word repent in a minute because um, that's another one that the religious spirit loves for you to learn, right? Man, the other day, uh, let me tell you this real quick. Um, this was not Raquel's fault. I know I blame everything on her, but this was definitely not her fault. Uh, our fence is finally going in. And uh, our guys hit a, hit a gas line, the gas line to the house. And this is kind of the, the last day where I'm finally, I'm barely over the sickness. And I, I'm, I'm not all the way there yet. I'm not eating well. I got to go outside and deal with the fire department and, and the, the gas company, all that. Anyway, so the guy that shows up, the first responder for the gas company, he comes in and um, he was a little... Uh, he had attitude. He had attitude. Like, dude, if you don't like the job, then go do something else, man. This is your job. You're the first responder. We had an accident. We didn't go do it on purpose, you know. And I told him, hey, bro, we didn't, we didn't do it on purpose, man. Yeah, I know, man. I just get frustrated. And um, I said, how do you think I feel? <laughs> Are they going to make me pay for this? He goes, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> and so anyway, he's there. They're, they're all there. Then the crew shows up. They're about a five-hour ordeal. And, and man, I, you know, I'm, I'm there. I'm talking to him, and I'm hanging out, and, and we're all talking. And, and then he's, he's the last one. And, 
And I noticed, I felt something. I was like, man, Lord, what am I feeling here? What is this? I couldn't quite get it. And um, so he's, he's working on the meter, and there it came. And he's talking about something. He goes, yeah, man, just crazy. He goes, but you know, that's what Isaiah talks about. And he keeps working. Uh, he's wanting me to bite. He's trying to witness to me. He's wanting me to bite. That's what it is. And he wasn't in a lot of our other conversation with the other guys. And so he's, so I bite. I take a big old bite. I said, oh, man, I love Isaiah. He looks at me like, like he's working like this. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Isaiah's awesome. I said, I see it a little different because what he started to tell me is, he said, man, you know, God changed my life. Let me back up. I told him, I said, uh, yeah, I love Isaiah, man. I said, it's one of the first books I read when I got saved. Right then, you know, it's time to have a party now. Woo! He's ready. And he says, uh, wow, okay, yeah, man. He says, yeah, man, you know, he said, man, I, I, was in, in, I was drinking and I was in drugs. And, and, man, God changed my life, turned me around. I had to do this, this, and that. And now, man, that's why we got to do, we we do good, man, because, see, he's in control. Uh, and he, it says in Isaiah, he, man, he loves Isaiah. He, it says in Isaiah that, that uh, he causes the good and the bad. And so this... Man, he does these things in your life when you're not right, and, and, and we gotta we gotta do these do this stuff, all this bad stuff in the world, man. That's he's causing that, man. And and I went, okay, Lord, um, all things, all people, all things, all people, all things, all people, all things, all people. Because <laughs> right away, I'm, I, dude, that's a flat out lie, man. You're being lied to, bro. But I didn't go there. I said, man, you know. I said, man, I know where you're coming from, and I said, I just. I had this radical encounter, and I realized that everything about God is good. There's actually no negativity in him at all that you find in the Scripture. I said, I, I, I know Isaiah. I get it. I said, but, man, there's a whole lot there. And I said, man, I, I, I would love to chat with you more. But uh, really, just kind of look from that standpoint of his goodness, man. He goes, well, yeah, he's good. He's good when you're good. I was like, man. I said, bro, he's good all the time, man. But, hey, I'm just, hey, I'm not arguing with you. I'm just telling you, that's my view. And um, I already knew where the rest of the conversation would keep going. It would be a circle, right? Because he's one of those, um, he's, he's got his, um, his points, right? Good guy, just blinded at the moment now if I would have come out and not been all things all people that would have been a different conversation or an ugly one right the guy was being a jerk and I could have just been a jerk back right but anyway he uh he stuck in this in this religious way of thinking that uh, number one God is bad he, he does bad too and he doesn't God doesn't cause cancer. That's the first thing I always throw out there. So, so you're saying that Jesus um, causes stage four cancer just to show up in somebody? Some people believe that. He kept talking about God is in control. And, and I said, man, I, I hear you, bro. And I said, I, I said, I used to think the same way. But I said, but um, let me just, you, you told me yours. Let me tell you mine, and, and we'll call it a day. I said, but if he was in control, then then how is that love? Because when, like, what is it if, if, um, if we don't have free will and we're being forced, what is that? That's a violation. And I said, does, is God sovereign enough that he can do things? And he does. Yeah, he does. And he can, but he's not in control because we're not robots. He loves that love relationship. And there's scripture all that, oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I see, but, but uh, I, I mean, he just, he's, you know, Isaiah said, I said okay, we're done. <laughs> and it's one of those moments where how to be all things, all people, I don't know. But being in that moment, like what would Jesus do? I know the old 90s cliche, WWJD, anybody got their wristband, right? 
um, I felt bad for the guy because he's one that really believes that God's smacking people with cancer, that he's bringing tidal waves and tsunamis and hurricanes to New Orleans because it's the sin capital of the world. And I'm sorry, but that's just not in the Scripture. And also on top of that, it's not in God's character or nature because we're not under the old covenant anymore. He broke the old covenant. Jesus fulfilled all of it. And now we're under the new covenant. You can read that in John, Hebrews, Corinthians, Thessalonians. That's a whole other story. Most, y'all, y'all all know that already. I'm sorry. I'm rambling here. So Mark 1. Let me show you what I'm so excited about. Um, in verse 14, um, man, John got captured, right? Herod came and grabbed a hold of him and captured him. And they took him into custody. Um, and so Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God, saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So same message. Um, <clears throat> and as he was going, verse 16, as he was going along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net in the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their net, uh, nets and followed him. And going a little farther, he saw James, uh, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, uh, who were also in the boat mending nets. And immediately called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants. And they went away to follow him. And they went into, then, then, or sorry, they went into Capernaum and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and began to teach. And they were amazed at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one having authority and not as the scribes. And just as the man, uh, just then there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit. And he cried out saying, what business do you have uh, with each other, Jesus of Nazareth? Um, have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And throwing uh, him into convulsions, the unclean spirit cried out with a loud voice and came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they debated among themselves, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. Uh, verse 28, immediately the news about him spread everywhere into all the surrounding district of Galilee. Um, and it just goes on and on. So let's go back to 14 real quick. So Jesus is the perfect example of all things to all men because he meets everyone at every situation, in every circumstance, no matter where they are, how deep it is, how shallow it is, how far it goes, how high, how wide, how low, how bad, how good, how sad, how terrible, or how great. He meets you there. Amen? Look around the room right here, and we've got every story from every corner of life, right? There's all kinds of stories in here, and, and, and some of them we don't tell anymore because they're under the blood, and we don't need to do that. I don't need to know all that, right? I'm just saying, look, in, today we have a, a lesser amount of people in here than normal. And even in this small crowd, the stories of life right here would go completely up the mountain and down and through the gutter and up the palace and back around the other side and through the garden and all the way around whatever kind of thing you could imagine, right? We've got some life experience in here. <laughs> Every situation that Jesus came into he had an answer. The reason he had an answer is because he is the answer. So it's not just that, oh, you need Jesus, he's the answer. No, 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 no. Yes, Jesus is the answer, but he's the giver of answers, and he lives inside of you. So you being all things to all people for all situations and all circumstances is because you have an answer. Not only do you have an answer, you have the answer. And that's why you can be all things to all people. But let me prove it to you, since you look like you don't believe me. <clears throat> Verse 
look at these situations. So John is in an area, right, outside. He's in Galilee, in the desert part of Galilee, and he's sharing, he's preaching, right? And Jesus himself goes out there, gets baptized. All these people are coming. They're all coming, right? And what happens? John gets arrested, and he gets taken away. So there's now a void in this spot that God was doing something, right? Okay, thank you. And so there's an emptiness over here in Galilee, in the desert, because something happened. Life happened. And Jesus goes, verse 14, Now after John had been taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. There was a need and God found a way to fill it. And everything you're going to see in this chapter obviously is Jesus fulfilling it, right? Because that's who we're reading about. But the difference is now we need to take this today and learn, wow, how do I apply that in my life? Because you're the Jesus of today. You're his voice. You're his hands and feet to go use another 90s Maranatha song, or was that Vineyard, right? Anyway, probably only those of us over 40 will get that. Um, See, Jesus did not just come into a situation and only fulfill the need. The need that he filled included the next step that would take them to future fulfillment to the next point that they were capable of grasping. He comes into a situation to fulfill a need. Is that true? Did he fulfill any needs in your life? Yes. Okay, so that need that he fills, it includes the next step that will take that situation, those people, or whatever, to future fulfillment. Jesus doesn't come and give just what's needed. He gives extra to carry to the next point. Look, I'll I'll prove it to you. Verse 16, as he was going along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, uh, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going on a little farther, um, I lost it. Going a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, uh, who were also in the boat mending nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and went away to follow him. Um. You know what? I got my note reversed there. Uh, I meant to go to Capernaum. Sorry, I jumped. Um, sorry, y'all, I jumped my notes. So let me back up. With, with, uh, with uh, Simon and Andrew, and they're sitting there casting nets. They're doing what? They're fishing. Why were they fishing? Because they're fishermen. Is that true? They were fishermen. Were they good at it? Yes. Had a full-blown business. So Jesus comes and sees them, and look at what he says. Uh, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately left their net, and they followed him, going a little farther. So... Jesus told them to come and follow me, and he tells them, I'll make you fishers of men. Did he change what they were doing? No, he didn't. You see, being a fisherman was their purpose and their identity. Jesus knew these two guys. My dad created them to be fishers or fishermen. Their just purpose and identity is a little bit off kilter at the moment because that's where life has taken them. But I am going to get them back on track. Hey, guys, come follow me. 
and I'm going to teach you how to find men. Simon and Andrew were designed by the Father to be men that were able to go and talk to people, to bring the gospel, to bring good news, to just interact with people. They were men who were fully capable of having conversation, intelligent at that, even though they weren't educated. They were built and designed to grab people. And all their life, see, that was their purpose and their destiny, to catch things, to grab things that were needed. They just didn't have it on the right direction. Did Jesus come and change their behavior like the religious spirit tells you to do? Right? Does anybody know that? You know that the religious spirit, like how many of you women wearing pants, you sinners? Right? You two danced together up here today. Whoa up. This ain't Studio 45 from 1989. What up? We ain't got no disco ball in here, baby. I mean, right? The religious spirit will put that kind of stupidity on us. And it'll say that. He didn't change their character. He changed, I mean, their, their, their behavior. He didn't give them a list of you have to do this now to catch men. He just pointed them in the right direction. Their purpose and their identity didn't even change at the core. Just the direction. He says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. I wondered, man, I've always thought, <laughs> God, I feel stupid saying this. I've always had this picture, man, for all these years that, you know, like on the movies or, or anybody remember Superbook, the old Superbook Christian cartoon? Man, it's old. It's pretty cool. But like, you know, when God would show up, there'd be this flashing light and, and you would hear the angels and you'd hear the ah, 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 sound like little Ariel singing, little mermaid or whatever. And there would be this moment of captivation where Holy Spirit would say, now you will be fishers of men. And so I thought that's why they went, oh, yes. We'll be fishers of men. Go look at any Jesus movie from the 70s or 80s. Oh, Lord Jesus. That's how I thought in that they were captivated with the shining glory of the Father over the Son with Holy Spirit dove flapping wings behind Him. And they said, immediately we will drop our nets. That's how I thought it was. But I'm wrong. Because when he said to them, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men, he was standing there, the son of the living God, the one who created all things, right? It says all things were created through Jesus. Their creator is standing in front of them. And they were drawn to the truth and the authenticity of, of this man who knew exactly who they were, but more so knew exactly what they were capable of. And they realized the authenticity that he had and who he was. He was speaking truth. Truth bears witness with truth, yes? And they came alive. Hey, pops, peace out, homie. Gotta go. Left the nets. Because their true purpose jumped in front of them. It gets even better because it says, um, going a little farther, uh, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were also in the boat mending nets. So uh, where I kind of saw that, and I was like, man, so Simon and Andrew were actually, they were actually the ones that were, you know, throwing nets and catching nets. And here we see um, uh, James and John who were fixing nets. They're still fishermen, just doing something different. He says, immediately he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and they went away. You know, I wonder, do people think that there was like father-son fights going on? Oh man, here's an opportunity. 
I got to go. Peace out, homie. No. Hey, guys. I love what you're doing, but come and follow me and watch how you can learn to catch men. Man, I hope this is making sense. Um, So when Jesus told him to come and follow me, he says, I will transform you into fishers of men instead of fish. When he said that, he was not changing who they were, but was changing the direction of their purpose and of how they had been seeing it their whole life. These guys, this is what they did their whole life. You ever wonder? I mean, our spouses do, but do you ever wonder why you do some of the things you do? I hate to pick on you guys, but they used to go clubbing, (laughs) dancing, right? Uh, (laughs) But look, is it that, oh, they're just sinners back then and they just trying to, was it really with that? Or was it that they just hadn't been pointed in the right direction yet to let out what was in them in the purpose of worship? Because when you see them now, does this make sense? They met Jesus and he said, hey, come follow me. I'll show you how to worship. And they jumped in and now they worship in front of us. And they're leading us to new places in worship. All their life, this is, that's the way they saw it. This is what you do. And they met Jesus just like the sons of Zebedee, just like Simon and Andrew. And he changed your purpose the direction of how you saw your purpose. Does this make sense? I am blown away, guys. Sorry. I don't know. Is that that okay to say that I'm blown away in what I'm talking about? I don't mean it arrogantly at all. Um, So, see, these guys, their purpose had led them to fish for fish, but his purpose was for them to fish, but for people. The life change that he brings is about direction and purpose not actions and when your direction and your purpose changes your actions will follow see uh our good old baptocostal catholic people that we used to all be part of they got it they got it a little backwards because they look at changing your actions so that your behavior will change but your behavior is never going to change because of actions Do your kids really have a change of heart when you spank them with a belt nine times? No, they don't. They don't change. Not their heart. They just don't do this because if I do this, I'm going to get a spanking. And it's going to hurt. Right? You know, I told y'all, man, my grandpa, my mom said, he's a vulgar old man. Vulgar, nasty. Taught me how to cuss. I'm the first grandkid. Wow, I was cussing before I was talking full sentences. All kind of every dirty joke. That's how I learned Spanish. Learn all the bad words first. The first time, I think I was about six years old, and I cussed in front of my grandma. My family was pretty rough. And we're sitting there at the table. Papa's on that side, I'm on this side, and she's bringing lunch. Chicken fried steak. I'll never forget it. She used to, me and my cousin, she would give us a, a piece of bread, uh, you know, Mrs. Baird's white bread. She poured the gravy on there and put a little slice of butter right on top of it and put that on a side plate, and then you got your chicken fried steak. Jesus touched that stuff. But that day, <laughs> Jesus wasn't in the room, or he left real quick because Papa says, what do you think, boy? And I said, this looks like some good stuff. <laughs> but I didn't say stuff. And I think I barely got the tea out of my mouth. And as she's setting plates like this, and she goes, whoosh, and then walks around the table. Like I'm on the floor, squats down to me, pulls her dress up, squats down, looks me, grabs my face. I'm like, she grabs me, and she says, don't you ever talk like that 
in this effing house again. <laughs> Woo! Uh, you see, I still got a little, still got a little twitch from it. Forty years ago, forty-three years ago. <laughs> Jesus, help me. <laughs> Do you know? Did, did that stop me from cussing? It stopped me from cussing in front of her. Papa tried again a week later. Hey, boy, tell Nanny that joke you heard at the market. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. What joke do you hear, son? Mm -mm. I just looked down, closed my eyes. Six-year-old praying like, like Jesus himself in the Garden of Gethsemane. Blood dripping off, like sweat dripping off of me. Start shaking a little bit. Ooh. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Praying in tongues, too. Didn't know what they were, but <laughs> he just laughed. He just laughed. Like, that was my family, right? They messed up, man. Real messed up. But nevertheless, that did not stop me from cussing. I still cussed. Uh, still, man, I mean, it just, actions don't change your heart. You change your actions, it does not, that doesn't control your heart change. But man, you change, you change your heart. When your heart shifts, your actions start to change. Spirit of religion does it backwards. Does that make sense? So real quick, let me wrap this up. Man, sorry. Um, so in verse 21, says that they, they went into Capernaum and immediately the Sabbath, uh, or, sorry, on the Sabbath and immediately entered the synagogue and began to teach. And they were amazed at his teaching. For he was teaching them as one having authority and not as the scribes. So, all things to all people. How does this tie in with fulfilling a need? Um, with purpose and direction. I think Jesus was the ultimate example of being all things to all people. And you and I are meant to be all things to all people in this world around us. And today, I'm hoping to empower us with another tool as we go out into the fields out here, as we go out into life, and we get out here and we walk among people, we live among people, we work among people, we drive down I-45, Jesus help us, and that as we do so, that we are trying to be all things to all people. And these are simply ways of doing that, ways of being that. One is if you come across someone, and maybe, maybe I'm hoping that this does something for you like it did for me because I'm, I'm opening my eyes to my purpose and my identity in a, in a deeper way, man. Jesus has been talking to me this week about my purpose, and I'm trying to go a little deeper a little fine-tuned into what I'm meant to do. Why do I do this certain thing? Uh, you know, uh, me and Mark were talking the other day, and he was making some comments about things he notices about me, um, like when it comes, you know, here to the church uh, and stuff. And, uh, yeah, man, I, I'm, I am absolutely like that. I, 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 uh, that's part of who I am. That's how God wired me to be this certain way. And I, I am fully aware of that. I know that like, like I, I just know. There's this one aspect of my life that I know this is part of who I am. And so now I look to walk in that. And, and so I'm hoping that by reading these scriptures and, and, and seeing this, me bringing this from this light, I'm hoping that, that you as well will begin to see some things on your purpose and identity that will, will fine tune and hone in or even open up complete new areas of yourself that you didn't think about before. And then the, the, the world part of this is, okay, now when we're out and about, man, how do we look at people and understand what they need, right? Like, like the example about Eric and Rebecca. 
Like that lady we saw at Top Golf. You remember that lady? I told that story twice already, I think. You know, so go back and watch a YouTube if you want the story. No, I'm just kidding. But like norm before I would have saw that lady acting like that and being like that, and I'd have been like, man, she need to go. But no, no. She's being who she is. It's just a purpose, and the identity needs to shift. So how can I get her to see that? When someone comes to the house to work on something or fix something, I have to look at them and say, man, um, you know, these guys are electricians, man. Are they, hey, man, do you, you really like dealing with electrical stuff? Oh, man, yeah, I love it. It's fascinating. Oh, so you're meant to figure out how to bring power into people's lives. You're meant to figure out how to connect things in people's lives, and that's what you're meant to do. You think you're supposed to hook up light switches, but you're supposed to be connecting people. Oh, okay. I talked about Kevin before. Dude can build almost anything, figure it out and all that kind of stuff. Do we think that Kevin's just supposed to build cars and fix things for everybody around here? Uh, no. <laughs> well, you're married to him, so you can say that. But No, he's meant to be a builder of people for the kingdom. And I could go on and on. No, ma'am. Oh, man. She tells me that all the time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you, Helen. Yeah. All right. Let me move on from that. <laughs> Embarrassing me. No. Um, let's try to look at the life change that he brings as the point of direction and purpose for the people that we encounter so that we can be all things to all people. Does that make sense? If, if you and I will look at people, um, this is another one from the 90s, look at people with the heart of Jesus. <laughs> look at them with the eyes of Jesus. Right? You remember that one? Like, we used to have to, we used to think that we had to, like, turn that on. Oh, I need Jesus' eyes now. Sinner. (laughs) You remember those, right? You know, there's people that think, there are people that think that if you don't sing hymns in church, that it's a sinful thing. What the heck, man? That's how blinded people are. So let's not be blinded when we're trying to bring the kingdom. It doesn't matter if you smack them with your King James Bible, if you give them, you know, John 3, 16. And I'm going to go as even, I'm going to go as far to even say, it doesn't even matter if the simplest thing you do is to be extremely nice to them. And you show them the kindness of the Father. Is kindness one of his characteristics? You know, as good old Pentecostal AG people, we think, oh, no, yeah, you can be kind, but they need to speak in tongues. Shandai. Shandai shakalaka. (laughs) You know what I'm talking about? Like, we think it's not accomplished unless they speak in tongues. And that is another, I'm sorry, but that is not the golden rule of the gospel. I can show you in multiple places. The characteristics of the Father are what? Number one, love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, long-suffering, gentleness. You mean when I'm gentle with someone who's being a jerk to me that I'm being like Jesus? Yes, you are. And maybe that's all they need at the moment. Maybe next week you can smack them with the King James. But maybe this week they need kindness to set them up. I mean, Jesus just came and said, hey, guys, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. 
man, I don't know if this makes sense to y'all today. It's my mind is I'm I'm rolling so many things in my mind right now, um, with just trying to fulfill what I'm meant to do and who I am meant to be. And I know that for so long, all of that, all of what I was supposed to be and do was captured in a small box that was tied up with the chains of religion that told me that if I didn't tithe, if I off my time, if I didn't give him, you know, two hours and 40 minutes a day reading his word, that he wasn't happy with me. I used to think that God's got an eraser. You know how out of context that scripture is? They use that scripture all the time. Oh, he'll blot your name out. Man, please go read the book, man. What the heck? Anyway, is any of this making sense today? I'm sorry. Stand with me if you would because Raquel is giving me the look. I'm just kidding, y'all. I'm picking on her a lot. I love you, Raquel, very much. And I am joking with you. Please don't show them the video. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thank y'all for praying for us, man. Man, it wasn't COVID, but son of a gun, man. It was bad. Anyway, today's is a, a great day for us to learn to be all things, all people. Amen? Does this make sense? Are y'all good? Man, I, I got so much more. I can't wait to dig in. next. I'm going to jump next week from that same passage and look at repentance. And we're going to continue to break down these chains and walls of <laughs> what that even means, right? Um, and just to be clear, for, you know, for the YouTube and all that, uh, I don't for a moment think that it's okay to, uh, to sin. Oh, let's go out and just do whatever we want. I don't think that at all. Um, I think there was a comment about, I deleted it the other day. Somebody, I don't know if you saw it. They got in there and put on some, somebody said the other day, uh, you disgust me. You are, you disgust me and you have not read your Bible. Um, what? Yeah, one time somebody put someone there about I was going to hell. <laughs> Delete. Block. Anyway. Father, I just thank you so much for today. Such a, a, a just an amazing encounter in worship and, man, getting to, dedicate Caleb to you, you know, joining in with his mom and dad to, and even the rest of the family that's here today to, to lift him up to you. Man, we just seal that with the Holy Spirit, uh, like Ephesians talks about. And Father, we thank you so much for your word, for your, your passion. And I pray that we would continue to dive in and learn about the reality of living with you and not walking contrary to real life with you. I pray that the people around us would, when they hear our voice, that they're, they're just, they're really hearing yours. And that they would see you and your heart through everything that we do. And I thank you so much, Father, because you are good, good God. We thank you, Jesus, for your desire to walk that walk and pay that price. We thank you for what you created us to be. And Holy Spirit, we thank you so much that you are revealing the Father's heart for us and for everything around us. And I pray that it would just continue, God. Help us to continue to grow deeper and deeper into the understanding and deeper into our capacity with you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, everybody. Y'all be safe. We love you all. And um, if you need prayer, come and see us.